out and she was going to the bathroom and she decided to stop at the mattress and pat her on the head. And she let her pet her for a minute, like a second, and then all of a sudden she lunged and bit her on the arm. How bad? It was like a couple of punches of them, definitely. Bite and retreat or bite and shake or? She bit, my mom said, yeah, I got her away pretty quickly. My mom said it felt like she didn't really let go right away, but she made her fall. I got up, I put her in the crate right away. That was in the dead of the night with the lights out or what yeah, kind of scenario? Yeah, the lights were out. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> Hold on. She's going to... She's giving us a, good, a lot of opportunities to observe her behavior, which is good. Yeah. So fixating on the person walking by, go ahead and grab that handle and then relocate that leash to the circle on that martingale. There you go. <clears throat> good and that'll give you a lot more control she's very strong you're having to put all of your strength into pulling her so a collar that gives you a little bit more leverage is going to help you out so that you can protect you against worst case scenarios wide martingales are typically where i go because i want it to be comfortable but i want it to still give leverage so inch and a half even two inch martingales are really comfortable and if they were to really pull against it, it'll do its job. It'll collapse. It won't necessarily choke because the wider the collar, the more square inch surface area. So the wider, it's less likely that it's going to close up and choke the dog. So that's why people use the really, because I always wonder why those, I mean, I've seen the one inches, but I'm like, why do people have those? Really wide as possible. Yeah. Wide as possible. Comfortable, get leverage, get control. And then where there's a sweet spot where it does its job and it's, more comfortable than like a flat collar because it's not blunt pressure across 40% of the neck. It collapses. So it's more comfortable until it needs to do its job and stop the dog from moving forward. So that's probably going to help you out tremendously with the handling piece. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get her liking me. I stole my client's ball. This is my first client's ball. <laughs> Great. I'm going to call her. That's actually the dog's favorite ball. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> so where are your, if you could wave a magic wand and fix two things today, what would it be? Reactivity today because that takes, I'm sure. It depends. Uh, depends, yeah. It depends on what, what happens, how it presents, what the issues are, what the drivers are. Sometimes there's a straightforward path. Sometimes there's a miraculous thing that happens in the very first session. It really comes down to why she's doing it to determine this sort of training plan and how intensive it's going to be. But when we're saying dog reactivity and you're saying, I would like it fixed, give me the scenario where it's the biggest pain point where you're like, oh my gosh, this sucks. Is it on the walks or? Okay. Sure. And what behaviors are presenting on the walk? So there are times that she definitely fixates, and I, I typically walk away from okay. triggers. I don't go towards them. But um, every now and then you can't always avoid them because people come around the corner or whatever. But um, she will lose her mind. She just starts to bark and pull, and she everything she can give to get towards that dog. Got it. Barking and pulling. Barking and pulling. Chewbacca barking or just like we heard there. Arr, 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 arr. Yeah, okay. And just clawing to get towards them. Yeah. Okay. And then when you redirect her and you say, let's go, is there, what does she do then? She usually pays no attention to me. I just have to pull her. Like I literally will. This is usually why I have this because I get more control and I just pull her. She's never redirected on you? Oh, no. She'll never bite you. This dog bite me? In a no. fit, she'll never. Have you ever seen her snap your way? A faint snap? No. At my, at my <laughs> daughter, she has me. I will say, yes, 
yes, she's made some, and then she stops. And okay. I think it's because it's, well, obviously it's because it's me. What's um, going on with her back leg? So when she came from the shelter, this was like bleeding and gross and stuff. Um, How long have you had her? About a year and okay. a little over a year. Okay. She's technically still my foster, but I won't let her go anywhere because I don't really who, anyone can Who are you fostering for? Martina. Yeah. Oh, shit. You're with Martina? Yeah. Oh. I do a lot of, I have dogs and kennels that, I talk to you about Coco. Um, oh, shit. You're the, you're the comp set. God damn it. Yeah, sorry. I should have led with that. I'm sorry. Um, okay. I got a phone call about Coco last got night. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. So <laughs> now I'm, that. I'm familiar with your situation. Okay. <laughs> She, All right. They put her in dog overbreed for a month, and they oh. they basically threatened. And so Maria was like, "Can you please take it down until I talk to my attorney?" And so she has it done. Take um, that review down. Yeah. They, I, oh God, they sent me a whole long. It's all lies. It's not lies. The, the pictures don't lie. They, it's not lies. No, pictures don't lie. Exactly. The dog is twenty pounds lighter and covered in shit. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <No. laughs> Yeah, I, if let me know if you want to get involved. I'd be happy to light them up too. Oh, that was deplorable, yes. and that happens a lot more than we know that we care to acknowledge in the dog training industry. Most of these facilities are just like a cesspool of dogs that are covered in their own feces and urine, and they're not eating and they're shriveling down. And it's she just was very shut down when she came out yeah. there. She stopped barking altogether in her crate. But so, I mean, you know. so she's her tail is tucked, shut down now. And laying next to you. Did she go to that facility? She was there for a month. Okay. And I remember the first day I took her, the guy, Nick, who, um, he didn't want to take her. He said, because I gave him the leash, and he was like, I don't feel comfortable taking her. I'm going to have someone else get her, because every time you move, she goes right to you. And she's really, like, giving him, not liking his energy and stuff, and... So he wasn't comfortable, and so he waited for someone else more experienced to come, and so I had to wait a while to drop her off. And, uh... Down now, uh, tail laying down, uh, made some noises. She's showing me intentional disinterest, and a big so a big change has happened. I don't know if she's thinking that you're going to drop her off and she's going to stay here. Sometimes you'll see that as a residual. Sometimes you'll see fearing me because I obviously look, smell, and I look like a trainer right off the bat. And so sometimes I'm a precursor to a fear response if a dog went into, had an extended period of time with a compulsion trainer. What tools did they use with her? Slip, prong, what? They used the slip lead. Okay. No prong. Okay. Um, slip lead was all they ever used. And basically, they... Slip, slip doctors, they're called. Yeah. What? And then was there any success? So she came in, she came back a little flattened out, like calm or whatever. What did they say that they did in terms of the training plan? One time they let her out of the kennel, the one and only time that they actually lost. Um, they said that she immediately started to try to dominate the other dogs, okay. the alpha, yeah. by mounting and stuff. So okay. they immediately put her right back in. Got it. I know that their way of training is to make them uncomfortable. So they use their two fingers and poke them in the side. Mm. I literally watched them do it. Mm. And they told me themselves, their idea is to make lazy dogs. They want their dogs to be lazy and be okay to be in a crate for 20 hours a day, to not bark, but they make them uncomfortable so they don't do what they want them to do, basically. Okay, all right. She's a dog skin rug right now, glued to the floor. Can you get her comfortable? Can we get her get her engaging with a ball or something? Let's get her anything. But it's a squeaky, I think. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to play with that? You want to play with that? There you go. Go ahead. Get it. Okay. Just watch her when she comes over to me because she's not entirely comfortable. Just really enjoying the interaction from you and the stimulation from you. Doesn't really get the concept of the ball, which is fine. You can shape that game. Right off the bat, I can tell you, if she's coming in hot, head tall, and she's doing that pity, 
hugging, mounting, trying to pin. Um, she could teeter on what's referred to as a search and destroy play style where she's made the game of the interaction and made a game of the mounting and the dominating and the asserting. And that's how she views play. Mm -hmm. That looks a lot like dogs coming up, coming in hot, head tall, and immediately going to mounting and pinning or coming in head tall and trying to punk the dog. And if the dog reciprocates and head tall stiffens too, then it's typically a dog fight. It might be something of the sort. Not a lot of socialization. Sometimes that assertive play style is a default play style because the dog hasn't had enough socialization to form a healthy play style. Tag dogs, chase dogs, rough and tumble dogs. And so because of that, they're stuck in this overstimulated assertive default. The opposite of that is a submissive assertive default where instead of coming in head tall and looking to mount, they come in head lowered and they lick the dog's lips and they cower. It's all the same thing. I, don't, I haven't really messed with dogs enough to know what to do here. So I'm coming in and I'm just based on my temperament and presenting this way. <clears throat> it's, in terms of success for you, it's going to look a whole lot like getting her to disengage, getting her to choose to disengage. So the experimentation that we do in this process is how can I be compelling? How can I use something the dog loves to make, get them to make a decision to disengage from the dog and continue on with me? And it's the choice that you're looking for. So if you're ever in a situation on the dog walk where you're having to pull her out, like you're having to manage the situation and pull her out, that dog isn't choosing to disengage. So practice and success here is you going to maybe community parks where there's a distance. Where do you live? Alameda. Okay. So it might look like you going to the Alameda dog park, going on the opposite side from the uh, parking lot where people are bringing their dogs in off leash going on the beach side mm -hmm. and you having her track to those dogs behind the fence and working on getting her to disengage with communication and come into you and sit, choose you door number two and get really good at that. You work it a couple ways. You work low criteria, come into the sit, pay, great. You chose me, you got paid, releasing them to clue into the dog again and practicing it. And so now you've got a language that says, leave the dog alone, come to me. And then you would work it in a dynamic fashion so that it looks a lot like on the dog walk where you're walking, dogs are behind the fence, you're at 50 feet, she breaks from a loose leash to go towards the dog, you communicate, keep going this way. Again, at a distance where she's more readily going to be able to do that. The closer the proximity, the more stimulating, the more whatever the driver is, and the less she can hear you. So you're always reorientating the environment to set her up for success. It's almost like when we first start playing, when we first start bowling, what do we do? We put the bumper rails up yeah. because any seven-year-old that throws 17 gutter balls doesn't fucking like bowling. No. <laughs> so we set the game up so that there's no failure so you can have fun. Dog training is the same too. And in this situation, distance is going to be your bumper rails. And so you can slowly graduate for her getting better at the game. And then you can remove the bumper rails at closer proximity, right? So that, without even seeing what's going on and you, you describing her behavior, is probably going to be the path. I try to keep her away from, so I never think about going to like outside of the dog park and letting her have some distance and practice. And practice. That's it. That's it. That's, that's, that's all you do. You go. Out. That's what dog trainers do. We we put the dog in scenarios and we help the dog understand what we want in these scenarios and we look for choice and we get the dog more comfortable and actively engaging with us. And again, based on the drivers, you might switch it up a little bit. If there's a fear component to it, then you're going to be out there and it's going to be slow and tempered and getting her calm and comfortable and able to tolerate those environments. But if you're saying she's coming in hot, then it's probably not a fear activation, but it could be something to the, to the contrary. The reason that this is, is important is because the last thing you want is rehearsal of that former behavior because every time she rehearses it, even hitting that door and going bananas on that door is taking a step back in the process. Because in this beautiful chalkboard in her mind of reactive behavior, every rehearsal was a tally mark. And so if you were to close your eyes and imagine every single time she's lost her shit with dogs, however many tally marks that is. So in behavior modification, we're looking to create a second column and we're looking to get our own tallies up there. But if you really think about it, I can't have her continuing to put her own tallies up while I'm putting my tallies up. That's not clarity for an animal. So you're looking to put the former behavior through an extinction process. So distance is going to be a great means of keeping her firm, performing those behaviors, 
right? Helping her out, out a little bit. <clears throat> and it might look too like you disengaging from the dog walk in your neighborhood for a while. My board and train, the dog is being removed from its neighborhood. It's in a new environment. The trainer is taking the dog out and working this stuff, not rehearsing the previous behaviors and rehearsing new behaviors. And the dog has two weeks to four weeks of only that. That is setting a new foundation for this is what we want from you. You would do the same thing as if you were a dog trainer. And the oftentimes what I tell people is, if I were to pay you $1,500 a week to fix Kyoko's behavior, what would that look like? How would you change? It? What kind of effort would you make? How many times would you go out, right? That's the difference. I'm paid for a result. I have to provide a result. I have to really put the full court press out there. So you would want to do the same thing. So you're going to spend a couple of weeks and go, we're getting through this. Because if you can create that sort of dedication and that new sheriff and new game kind of uh, attitude, you're talking a couple weeks and she's a different dog. And that's, that's my problem. I need to stop. Set her I, up for success. Yeah, because I give too much time to rescue dogs and not enough time to her. Or so you're still actively, yeah. what are you doing with Martina that's taking all your time? Today I'm picking up a foster dog to take to another foster. I'm um, doing a meet and greet with a dog at a house. So after here I've got three things and then another meet and greet maybe this afternoon. I've got dogs in kennels that I try to go walk um, periodically. Where's Samantha and all the other volunteers? Are they doing the same thing? You guys are just running and gunning? Not all of them. Not all the people are. Is know. Samantha still with you? I, no. Okay. No. Some of the volunteers, like we have a group, like thread for the dogs at the kennel, but we typically only get one or two people that can tend to come once in a while to help walk. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's been, I, I, I lived at the kennel for two weeks to take care of all the dogs while the people left. Um, and now it's a new person running it. And so... They sold the kennel? The property was sold. And then a new guy took over. And he's terrible. So... It's a massive undertaking. He better know what he's doing. He, he doesn't. He doesn't. We were looking at purchasing that property and potentially taking it over, but it's a massive undertaking. Um, and he is not. He's not ready. He believes in group play, and his dogs do group play. And I'm like, I can't take my dogs out and do group play. I mean, it's just. He, you need to send him to me. If he wants to create a group play, you yeah. can do it. I mean, he can go dogs play for life, and he can get them to come in. If he's going to pay, because dogs play for life is going to come out, he's going to contract them to set him up for how to do that. Or you need to send him to me so that I can see what he knows and how I can build upon it because he is going to call. If he doesn't know what he's doing, play latent socialization with all the ambiguity of dogs and him not knowing those dogs and putting those dogs together. You better be a fucking guru at dog behavior because it's one of the most complex things that you can do. <clears throat> and so send him to me and let me see what's going on with him. He does think he's a guru. Um... Who is he? Is he a dog trainer? He's just he, like dog whisper. He's, yeah, no. Oh. He actually started breeding doodles in the pandemic to make some money. He had a doggy daycare in Martinez for a minute, and then in Castro Valley, it's like Lucky Dog or something like that. You Lucky Dog. So he's got dogs that were dumped on him. So. Is, she, is she on medication? I think it's the uh, Perfecto that stopped her. Cause she's not on anything else, and I did give her perfecto last night, so it's got her stomach a little. All right, uh, I'm gonna work through you today um, and show you how to get her to make decisions, and we're gonna practice that so that by the time you leave here today, you feel like you have an idea of what to do and how to do it. And uh, did you bring any treats? I have some in the car. Does she love those treats comparatively, or these, these treats will be fine? <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm going to have you go back out, and you're going to go onto the sidewalk on the other side of that tree so that she doesn't see the helper dogs come out. Okay. I'm going to open up this pit, uh, and then you and I are going to work at a distance where we can get her listening to us okay. and making better choices, and we'll see how far we can graduate. Um, I might take the lead initially, too, just to see if there's an upfront assessment, but the way you're describing the behavior, it's very standard with this breed, and so I'm pretty sure we're going to go the alternative behavior route, but if I see anything different, I might take the lead and work it, okay? okay. You want those treats, huh? Let me get you some treats.
That's like what? 40 bucks for that bag or more? Oh, this is pretty expensive. 119. Yeah. Okay. This is an eight point out pound bag. This, if you're using this as treats, this would take you two years to get through. It takes me like three months to get through, and I work oh, really? hundreds of dogs. <clears throat> okay, go ahead and take her back. Come on, come on. Uh, you like that food, huh? I had some as a sample, and she really did like it. Yeah. And I looked it up, and I was like, oh. You can. This will take you forever to get through. An 8.8 .8 pound bag with my discount, the Canon Optima 20 code, and then free shipping. You One bag, it'll take you nine months to get through. So it's worth it in the long run versus uh, freeze dried whatever. You're going to pile through that in two weeks, and that's 20 bucks, 30 bucks. That's good. So go ahead and take her out to the sidewalk. Come on, Sergey. This is a free session. Uh, I'm board train down the road has been fucking up their dogs and fuck this dog up. This is a foster I'm just doing a free session for. Uh, Martina Animal Rescue is a good friend of ours. Maria is incredible. <clears throat> She's a foster with Martina. I am feeling a little woozy. I do not feel good. Oh boy. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm I sound all fucking phlegmy in the mic. I'm sure that's not fun. That's about right. All right. I'm going to handle her first and do an upfront assessment just to make sure we don't miss anything based on your observations. <clears throat> Come on, walk this way. We're going to walk the same uh, direction. I'm just going to walk alongside you. And then you're going to do a lease transfer without her seeing it. There you go. <clears throat> She's got a little bit of a limp. Okay, sees the dog, head tall, observing and waiting to blast off. Looking for any sort of movement in Boo. As soon as Boo moves, she's going to take off. <clears throat> Close. Head lowered the closer she gets. More of a stalking posture, an anticipatory sort of position. Boo's locked up too, so anytime a dog does this, Boo freezes. But once Boo moves, she's going to go for it. So 
So all of this is threat detection. And moving forward is not a good thing, obviously, as you're performing threat detection. Now Boo is ignoring her and sniffing the ground. Tail is tucked, so she's covering her anal glands right now so that her anal glands don't express. Dogs do that so that predators in the area can't smell their anal glands if they were to express out of fear. So coming in, trying to get in a little closer. And just a loaded spring. A little Chewbacca sound there. So this is not etiquette. It's not out of control. Good. It's not out of control, but it definitely will cause a misunderstanding with dogs. Dogs don't perceive that as etiquette. So a dog is going to respond in a certain way. And that's going to eat, open it up for misunderstandings. And this is a very standard, like, bully pity thing. And not as out of control as normal. Psst. Wow, good job. There you go. So you see the difference there? Make a sound. Mama, treat. Get her to turn around. Wow, good job. That's what I want. The sound that I make is a little bit different. So most people, they make, they talk to a dog the way they normally talk to a dog in conversational tones. So if I were to say, Kyoko, no. Kyoko, no. Stop, Kyoko, no. Versus. Yeah, that's what a good girl. Very good. So I begin the rhythm by getting her to do a thing for me. We're painting, a, we're starting a door number two here. Door number one is wide open. That's the going bananas on the dog. Door number two, with each little repetition, we creak it open. Every choice to come over this way and choose me, we're creaking it open. Once we get really good at choosing me, very good, and she gets phenomenal at it, then we look to close door number one. We close door number one by making some sounds once she's doing a great job of performing that alternative behavior and choosing it minus my instruction. You'll see her start to give us a default check-in because that's typically where I ask. Then I might give a sound that says don't. Ah, let's go. And with each time that I say don't and she starts to understand now that she's she can hear me because we practice this a whole bunch she'll start to understand I don't want that behavior and we slowly creak that door number one closed, right? And it's a practice, opening and closing until finally door number two is open, door number one is closed, she ignores dogs, she keeps going, she loves it, she's happy, she's taking treats, right? And you can do that at various distances on the dog walk and she's totally fine. Very good. The idea here too that might be counterintuitive to a lot of dog trainers in the industry is I want the dog to enjoy my process because that is the mechanism for the dog choosing alternative behavior. If the dog likes it and is choosing the alternative behavior, that is therapy because the dog is choosing an alternative behavior, not boom, don't do it, right? And the dog fears the consequence. Hey, come, come. Yes, good girl. Can you sit? Wow, what a good girl. What a good girl. Can you sit down? Very good. What a good girl. What a good girl. I'm going to show you something. To get, her, to get her to look at me, I'm experimenting with different types of sensory. Hi. Come, 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 Yeah. Come, 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 come. Yeah. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Can you sit down? Can you sit down? Good. Get back to mom. Mom's home plate. <clears throat> yeah. this is the name of the game you're going to have a lot more success up front because she's doing things for me she doesn't know me so it just shows you how what a good girl she is she wants to be a, she wants to make these choices but you've got a relationship with her so there's also that so when she's choosing you she's choosing it because she loves you and she likes the treats and you're going to get a lot more have a lot more fun with it <clears throat> i'm going to hold the leash so that we're safe in case she tries to back out of a collar or do anything crazy. And I'm also going to remove the opportunity for you to use the leash too. So now you've got to communicate to her. 
So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to get her to dedicate on the dog. Okay. And I want you to say, hi. And when she looks at you, <laughs> the treats are there. Visually, you're showing her the treats are there. And that's what reels her in. Okay. Dogs are visual, right? You want to make sure that you're gesturing in a way that she understands that treats are coming her, coming her way. Okay. So take a step back. Go ahead and call her. Very good. Good job. Okay. Take a step back. This time you're going to lure her into a sit. We're going to get a little bit more control there. Add a little behavior to the sequence. Okay. Now lure the sit. Very good. This time, you're going to lure her to a sit. You're going to take a step back. You're going to ask for another recall. And we're going to add another behavior okay. to the oh, sequence. Okay. We're extenuating this idea that you're being paid to listen to me. And we're, okay, go ahead. Come on. Okay, lure the sit. Take a step back. Lure the sit. Take a step back. Go ahead, lure the sit. Good girl. Very good. Very good. We're doing a thing here. Listen to me. You see that? It really, it, it, as long as it's an interesting sound and it gets into the areas of the brain that cause her to call attention to you. That's all we're trying to do. Okay. Sometimes you can even pat them here. Pities are funny. Like most of my aggressive bullies and pity clients that have seen all the trainers and will eat any correction, uh -huh. they're neck hard. So they'll pull themselves unconscious on a slip, right? You can nuke them with an e-collar and they'll eat it no problem like a Tic Tac. But a lot of them are really sensitive to the flank. And so I'm over here doing kissy noises and tickling their ass and Cujo's turning around and wagging his tail. <laughs> Hi, you're doing so good. You're doing so good. Yes, you are. You're doing so good, huh? And I also want her to understand she's doing a good thing when she's over here. So the way I communicate is important. Good. This is awesome. This is great. The reason I do that is because once I get to a once I get to a place where I'm talking in a way that says, I don't want that, there's contrast. Don't want it. Look how great this is. Yeah. Don't want it. Look how great this is. Red light, green light. I'm amazing. That's right. Hot, hot cold. Yeah. Come, 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 come. You're doing so good. You're doing so good. And you hear these extra princess voices that I'm doing? You're doing so good. Do you see what's happening with her tail? Pities are those dogs that will self-reinforce as they're talking shit to a dog. Tail's gone, they're having a good time, yeah. and they could actually be catching some reinforcement from that, right? Yeah. A lot of them are bred to pursue conflicts. They're doing things that are stored deep in their phylogenetic information. They're doing kind of the thing that they were bred to do, and so sometimes it's self-reinforcing. So it's really important to make sure that what you're doing is doubly reinforcing. The dog is having a better time with you than they're having talking shit to the husky, right? Yeah. You're doing so good, huh? You're doing so good, huh? You're doing so good. Yes, you are. You're doing so good. And I can compete with payment. Not just one, but a couple, three or four treats. You're doing so good. Positive tones and inflections. You're doing so good. Now, even if it is self-reinforcing and she goes a little Chewbacca on Boo, that's 10 payments over here. I'm There's no competition in terms of the frequency that I'm paying, right? She's getting a whole lot over here. Yeah. Nothing over there. <clears throat> if she was already flattened out with a slip and she's still reactive, then devaluing the behavior with punishment. And it's a lot of times with these breeds, these are the breeds that give those dogs, a, those trainers a hard time because they're just tough. Yeah. She did. You, you think about the, sit. you think about the dogs that we put into this dog. These are fucking dogs that were bred for bear baiting and bull baiting. A dog that will latch onto a bear that's defending itself, thinking about the tearing, the gnawing, the, eviscerating these dogs as they're clamped onto a bear and this fucking five foot seven trainer with a slip is going to do something not a fucking chance <laughs> very good
they would walk her through a room, you know, with full of dogs. Yeah. You're doing so good, huh? You're doing so good. So good, good, good over here. I'm gonna start the don't over there. Locked in on you. Sit. Good job, huh? Good job. You're doing so good. Come on. Wow. There you go. There you go. I know, I know. So that's where the luring the sit when she comes up to you, you'll condition her to go into a calming position versus expending a little bit of energy. Jumping up on you because she might be a little overstimulated. You're doing some good today. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Look for a check in. See if she'll choose me. I'm not going to actually try to influence her here. I want to see if we primed a check in. That's her kind of taking a quick step through door number two. Go ahead and pay that. Good. So you can see two things happening. One, do this, get it, do this, get it, do this, get it. You're doing that so you prime her to check in with you. Once she starts checking in with you, now you're paying her because she made a decision to look at you. And then you can take a couple steps back. When she looks at you, you pay it a couple times. And then that the next stage would be when she looks at you, you move back and then you pay. And what will happen is you'll condition a retreat into you now. So now you see how you're creating a new behavior on top of that. So now she'll walk up to the end of lead and then she'll turn around on her own accord and come back to you and you'll pay that. And then you can massage that into something else. So if you want to keep moving, then it would be working it. Now she's retreating. She's disengaging from the trigger and walking over to you. And now you throw the lure down and you start walking and you pay that. Now you got her disengaging from the dog and walking with you on her own accord and being paid to do that. So, you know, influencing them with first stage choice, second stage, right? And then you get a dog that's just making better decisions. And then your only complexity is distance and proximity where you're working it. So if you have a bad day, you want to look at that circumstance and be like, what was up? Was the dog barking? Was the dog too close? And that helps you understand where you're at in the process and what you need to work towards and reframing your environment and going places where you can work it safely and get it to a result. <clears throat> Laying down, still keeping tabs, which is fine. <clears throat> there you go, mama. Hear something in the distance, the uh, leaves rustling that way. The way you observe a dog and have a really good sense of timing in where to communicate, getting them to do different things, telling them to knock things off, is you watch them and you watch what they're tuning into and you try to figure out what are they listening to, what are they looking at, and that's the way you get inside of a dog's head. But what that really does is gives you a sense of timing because as she's listening to somebody walking in the leaves a hundred feet away and then she starts cluing into the dog. Now I know there's a higher chance that she's going to do something in regards to the dog based on the dog's behavior, sounds, what have you. And I've got a keener sense of timing that I can catch it and communicate quickly versus her going full bananas and at the end of the lead and I've lost her. Yeah. Full bananas is a, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Right here, she's about to go for it. Why did she go for it? She stood up. Movement, yeah. right? Yeah. This is going to make you a better communicator and teacher in environments to know what will send her over. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I also over communicate when I want a dog to stay with me and I'm trying to help them out. You'll see me almost like a, a constant stream of communication going into her brain. Hey, let's go. Come. So this is static positions, disengage from the dog. I don't want you doing that. I want you choosing me. Another place where you can play this is, or work this is in movement, which is going to be a little bit more of what it looks like on the dog walk. Keep moving. She's not going to want to go away from you. We'll see. Come here. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> go ahead and take her lead. Grab some treats in your hand. Now, when you're practicing, so this is something you're going to want to practice minus even reactive dogs, especially if you're doing a lot of fostering, is you do have to have some effective handling and being able to get a dog to do something. Okay. Um, so getting a dog to move with you is something you want to get good at. Lure and reward is a great way of learn, learning how to keep a dog in motion with you, maneuver for you, take positions for you. And that's not something you'll want to build with a reactive dog. That's not fair. So if you're touching a lot of dogs with the rescue, maybe even younger dogs, practice this stuff, like how to get a dog to lure in a heel, to lure in a sit, lure down, how to get a dog to turn with you in the heel, all those things, because that will set you up for success when you have a dog that's a bit of a rodeo. And when you get them to choose you and they come back into your heel, you refeed that lure, they're taking the treats and they move on, they see the value in staying with you. But again, not something I want to build your skill sets with this particular dog. But if you want to come back with another dog, I can. we can do more of an obedience-driven routine, and I can show you how to do lure and reward. For now, just know that anytime you have the leashes on your right side, treats are on your left side. Okay. Dog is always on your left side. Yeah, that's the crip side. Okay. I'm luring so that the dog understands where I want the dog. So to enter my lure, it might look a lot like bullfighting. I take a step back, enough room for her to turn around, and now she's in my heel and we're walking. If I want to lure a sit, I throw the lure up, head goes up, butt goes down. If I want to start, I feed the lure to show her that we're moving. See that? There's also some a lot of, if you want to take Denise Finzi's The High Drive Dog, she's got a lot of stuff out there. It's nine bucks a month for a subscription, and there's tons of videos that you can watch and learn some more of this stuff. I also have a community you can join too, if you will. Tell me and I'll give you I'll give you access to the community and you can look at all my content on it. Yeah, she really likes these. I think I'll buy it. Here go. You see how she's moving, she's grooving? You see how, like, when we give her something to do, she's like, this is a hell of a lot better. Dang. Screw the dog. Come. Sometimes being quiet in static positions is a little bit more cumbersome for the dog. Because there's nothing else going on. That's the only stimulation that they're committing to. Come. See that? It's like bullfighting. So when I go to enter the heel, you'll practice this later on. I'm like bowling. I throw the lure back just enough for her to turn around. <laughs> I thought you stopped it on the ground. I should have said a night crawler, I think. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. I'll shoot you again. One more time. Kyoko. Throw the lure back. And now we're walking. So all we want is enough room for her to turn all the way around. Now she's walking on my heel. And then you would teach her when I stop, you stop. So you do that by stopping, luring up, paying. You do that 10 times, start, stop, start, stop. What will happen is you'll stop and she'll just give you an automatic sit because she understands the routine. <clears throat> Which would be amazing. I'll show you all this stuff. You'll have some fun with it. I definitely like that. I like that. How is she with kids? I don't know. I don't even let her go around kids because of her. Okay. She, 
do me a favor, hold her tight. Let me put Boo away and let's see, let's kid test her. Come on out. Go ahead. You can, yeah. More groceries. Where are we going to put the groceries, baby? I just wait to stock the fridge. Somewhere in there. She's going to make it fit. I don't That's not possible. I just, <laughs> it literally just, she went, I went down to Long Beach to get a tattoo and she went grocery shopping and I didn't know. So I knew we needed groceries and didn't look. And it was a work of, it was a miracle to get all the groceries in the freezer. <laughs> all right. Don't worry about the coffee now. I'll come back in and get it. Thank you, buddy. Neutral. Not particularly interested in them. My daughter just had a baby three months ago. Oh, congratulations. I know. Thank you. I, they wouldn't even let her around him. <laughs> yeah, that's a smart move. And I wouldn't either just because. No, you, you want to manage the interaction so that they feel a certain way about these things, about people, about strangers, about kids, about babies. So if you're not looking at it in the terms of let's introduce you the right way, then yeah, you're leaving it to, there's some ambiguity as far as how the dog is going to respond and mistakes can happen too. Do me a favor, grab a, see if you can grab a, a different collar for her. Um, someone's actually, I don't particularly want to use it, but someone's sending me a pawn collar, but if I could just, my, I'll just pick up a different, like a martingale. At least this will be fine. She responds really well to it. She's not fighting it. She comes off of it. Inch and a half martingale is where I would go. Okay. Let's, I'll get you in the car, huh? Yeah. Where'd you, did you leave any bags or anything like that? No, no, okay. All right. We'll walk you to the car. Where you at? Got me, myself, and I, and her. You down the hill? Is the dog up? Okay, cool. See how this is way more worse? So let me show you. This is, she's gotten accustomed to pulling on the end of this, and you're fighting all of her weight. I'm not going nowhere. You're going with. Yes, you're going with. It's okay. Okay, now I'll show you the difference. So where are we going? Right here to the two 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 to the honey bread farm. Okay. I, um, we're going. We're she going thinks on. you're going to drop. She thinks you're going to leave her. Yeah. I'm not, well, you know I'm not leaving you. See, she's not fighting that at all. She's not leaning against it. She's not pulling against it. She manages the distance. I'm going to go ahead and take her off. Hey, sweetheart. Go ahead and switch that out. Say, the car is a funny place. We're going to let people pet you. I could tell immediately. She gave me a little, little bit of a look, but she tolerated it. Yeah, I have a friend like outside of the car or inside the car. If he's sitting in my car, it's okay. Yeah. But if he's outside the car, she's in the car. He's tried to stick his hand in. And I can see it. Like, I can see it. Yeah. Um, thank you. You're so welcome. It was my pleasure. Keep me posted, okay? I will. Let me know. Text me about what you were saying about Coco, okay? Okay. All right.